Hi, this is the Chemistry for Biology channel. I'm John Irwin. This work comes to you from the University of California, San Francisco Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, the Scheuchert Lab, and the Irwin Lab, and it's supported by the NIH. And our topic today is transitioning from zinc-12 to zinc-15. Now, if you've been using zinc before, you've been using zinc-12 up until middle of uh, 2015. And zinc-12, as you'll have noticed, is quite different. So we wanted to tell you, and you'll know, they're really, not, there's not so much that they're incompatible, they're just different software packages. And so we wanted to take a minute to talk to you about transitioning from zinc-12 to zinc-15, because zinc-15 at this moment doesn't have all the features in zinc-12. And so here's our plan as of the middle of December in 2015. And so I've got the milestones uh, for the next uh, seven months uh, in 2016. And I just wanted to go through them with you. So there's really three different things. Each month we're going to try and do one new feature. That's the first column. We're going to, tr we're populating the, we're building the 3D models of the database for docking. And we're going to be updating the catalogs. So refreshing the information, making sure compounds really are purchasable and adding new vendors. So in January, we're going to be up to 15 million 3D molecules. As I write right now, in the middle of December, we're somewhere around six or seven million 3D molecules. You know, we're trying to build them as fast as we can. The catalogs are not being updated. They were updated in August. So at the moment, the information's a little stale and we're going to start updating them in January. So nothing's changing with the catalogs right this minute. We're also going to be doing some pattern curation during December. What does that mean? Well, it's including things like uh, getting the, the reactivity index as, as good as we can. So I hope to do that over the holidays. In February, uh, you'll have noticed we've got more than 250,000 rings, but a few of them are duplicates and broken. So we're going to be doing some ring curation. So look for that to improve by February 1st. Uh, the number of molecules will go up by 5 million, so we'll have 20 million molecules, mostly fragment-like and lead-like, but some other ones too. And uh, we'll have uh, we'll start doing the catalog updates in January, so we'll be only 15 weeks behind by the time we get to Feb 1, which will be uh, dating us by into October. So the catalogs will be up to October's catalogs, or better, by the 1st of February. Let's look at March. So an often uh, requested feature in Zinc 12 that doesn't exist in Zinc 15 yet is the shopping carts. We'll be adding that in, in, uh, in February, so it'll be ready in March. The number of 3D molecules will increase by another 5 million, so we'll be up to 25, and we'll be only 10 weeks behind, so January 1. So we should be current as of January 1, or better, um, on March the 1st. April 1st is our deadline to have 80% of zinc-12 replaced. So most features, most molecules, most things. So we're going to have 30 million 3D molecules. We're going to have we're going to be only one month behind um, on uh, uh, catalog updates. So we're very excited by that. And so tentatively, we're saying by April 1st, you can stop using zinc-12. Of course, it'll still stay online, but most features will be working by then, we hope. May 1, we're going to introduce phenotypes. This is something we had already in Zinc uh, 12, but uh, we're doing it in a different way, so we're hoping that's going to be exciting. We should be up to 35 million 3D molecules by then, and we hope to be current by May 1st, completely current. June 1st is our... Again, it all depends on how this goes. We really don't know. We're, doing, we're working as fast as we can. We're, we're hoping that by June the 1st, 99%, so basically everything in, in Zinc-12 will be replaced by Zinc-15. And if that's true, then you really, there's really, we don't think there's any reason to be using Zinc-12 anymore. We'll have 40 million 3D molecules, and we'll be only one, we'll, we'll still be current on the catalogs. And finally, in July, we are going to begin releasing new features um, that we've been working on that are not quite ready yet, tools, reactions, various other things. and. That, so looking forward beyond July, we're expecting to see this number here, the 50 million, is going to keep going up by about 5 million a month going forward until we have every single molecule in zinc, which will be, you know, probably sometime in 2017. 
when we have all uh, 130 million molecules or, or so in 3D. The catalog, the weeks behind, we hope that that's going to stay at one from now on. That's certainly our intention. And we're going to try and release new features basically every month. We'll see how that goes. Uh, there is a new paper out, Zing 15, Ligate Discovery for everyone. I encourage you to have a look at it. It's free to download. And uh, was that helpful? I hope that this has cleared up some of the mystery and confusion about the transition from Zinc 12 to Zinc 15. Uh, we're working as hard as we can, but we are, we're, we're just two of us here, and uh, we've got other things to do. But uh, we in, uh, you can now see what our timeline is and how we're intending to replace uh, Zinc 12 by Zinc 15. By the way, many of the features are already there. If you want 2D molecules, Zinc 15 is already better than Zinc 12. It's only for 3D and other things like shopping carts that Zinc 15 is just not there yet. This work was brought to you by the National Institutes of Health. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can visit us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. See you next time.